The Cowich and First Nations people have been weaving blankets and leggings using mountain goat wool for generations. It was in the 1850s when European settlers introduced sheep to the Cowichan Valley, and that sheep's wool became the yarn of choice. Now, the Cowichan sweaters are world famous for their designs, their unique texture, and their warmth. Today, we have Cowichan lamb as our culinary centerpiece, prepared with sage ricotta gnocchi, as well as wilted spinach. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome to Cooking on the Coast. Today we prepare Cowichan lamb two ways, with sage ricotta gnocchi as well as wilted spinach. Let's get to it. We have some gorgeous local lamb right here, as we said, from right here on Vancouver Island in the Cowichan Valley. We're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to take this lamb rack and we're actually going to split it into two different meals. We're going to take our loin and reserve that for searing a little bit later. And then we're going to use our rack to braise in the oven, low and slow, so that it gets meltingly fall off the bone. So first thing we got to do is get that loin out of there. So we're going to cut straight down, sort of right where this starts. You can kind of see, you can kind of see right here on the edge where that meat starts, and that's exactly what we're looking for. And then just follow the bones down until we separate that loin. There we go. So there's our lamb loin. A couple last things to do, just to trim it up. So there's a bit of a chine bone sometimes left on, especially when you're working with local lamb. They, uh, the local butchers tend to, uh, tend to leave a few extras on for us chefs. So, and this piece right in here, hopefully you can see that, this is called the back strap. It's completely inedible and it won't cook away no matter how long you cook this, so you really have to get that out of there. Take it out and just set this over here on our plate. Looks great. And now our bones. Now you can see there's a big chunk of fat on the top. We're going to trim a little bit of that away here. Not too much, we want some of the flat, the, some of the flat, we want some of the fat. Now, folks that don't like lamb, I'll tell you why. It's because of the fat. The fat does have a bit of a sort of a muttony kind of stronger smell. So if you don't like it, take more off. Now, we're at this stage, we're gonna cut these bones into a few extra pieces. And then we're gonna do what's called braising. Braising employs two different types of cooking. A high heat that starts it roasting, and then moisture, which is added, in, in this case, in the form of red wine and demi-glaze, to, uh, to help steam and sort of cook everything as we throw this in the oven. So we need to move right over to our pan here, into this guy, but first thing we're gonna do is a little bit of chopping here. We need some, we need some mirepoix. And mirepoix simply refers to three different, uh, three different vegetables. They're aromatic vegetables that add lots of flavor. So we have celery, carrots, and of course our friend, the onion. And then just a rough chop. You can see, you know, we're not gonna worry too much about the shape here, as long as they're sort of all kind of chopped at the same time and away you go. And then we'll get these right into our half pan here. And then onto our onion. Again, just a nice quick chop. Not too worried about being super uniform here. In it goes. Not only is this gonna add flavor to our lamb rack once we start cooking it, but it's also, if I can move it over here, but it's also, it's also going to add flavor to our, our sauce, which is gonna happen right here in the pan. So, we got our, our, lamb, our lamb bones, our lamb rack bones in there. We need a little pepper. And then I'm gonna put some garlic in there, just a couple of nice big pieces. That'll be fine. And we have some sage. Now sage is gonna come back in a little bit later with our gnocchi, so I'm just gonna add it here because that's just gonna tie the whole dish together. Red wine. There we are. And some demi. So demi is just a beef stock that's been reduced down, so it's a little bit thicker and a little bit deeper, rich color. There we are. Now why not put the whole shot in there, hey? We got all the wine, we may as well get all the demi. Last but not least, fire a piece of Aluminum foil over top, aluminum foil over top. Hard to say that one. And then into a slow oven, probably about 300 degrees, and let these guys cook down for about, probably about two hours or so. Okay, straight into the oven. Perfect. Now for the accompaniments to this dish. 
a, a ricotta gnocchi, so sage and ricotta gnocchi. It's a really unique type of gnocchi. Gnocchi is one of these things that's been around since the ancient Roman times. And this particular type doesn't have potatoes as you might normally find, uh, say in Abruzzo, which is uh, common for its potato gnocchi. This is more of a Tuscan style gnocchi here. So we have uh, ricotta, which is a fresh cheese. We have one egg. We're gonna chop up some sage, put that all in there. We wanna kinda go sort of fine with this sage here so that we can, we don't have too big a bite in each, in each uh, mouthful. And there we are, nicely chopped. Scoop that all in. And then this is very much about the feel, okay? As you're working with this, you're gonna add flour slowly and you're gonna sort of get an idea for what the texture is going to be. Add a little flour. Start bringing it all together. Now, a great way to add sort of a, uh, a bit more liveliness to this gnocchi is by adding a little bit of lemon zest, which we'll just do in one quick second here. I have a rasp right here beside me. Super sharp, it's called a microplane, has really, really fine teeth. And you just kind of take it and run your lemon over top and you can see how all, those, how all those pieces of zest come out. And it leaves behind the white bit, which is the pith, which just adds bitterness. So, there we go. We don't need too much, we're not making a huge big bundle here. And again, we're looking for that feel. So we're turning it, we're folding in all of that flour. It still looks a little bit wet, so I'm gonna add some more flour. Go. And we're almost there. So it's starting to come together. You can sort of see the texture has changed. It's not quite as moist anymore. And hopefully, if all goes well, it'll bind together when we take it to our boiling pot. I'll turn up the heat a little bit on that guy. We want it sort of simmering. If it's, if it's at a rapid boil, the whole thing will just explode and you'll end up with a big pot of ricotta soup. Instead, we want it just simmering lightly so that it cooks these guys and sort of sets them in their shape. Which brings me to our next and most uh, interesting part here. A couple of soup spoons. Let's move that out of the way. A couple of soup spoons. Dip one in the water, second one in the water, and we're gonna do what's called quenelling. So we take a spoon, pop the speck and spoon on top, and just shape them just like that. Now, Gilbert, if you're watching, I'm sorry I did more than three. You should be able to do it in one, two, three spoons. And you get these perfect little dumpling shapes. We'll do a couple more. So gnocchi is fairly traditionally served as uh, an appetizer in place of sort of a soup course or maybe the salad course you would find a gnocchi. There we are. Okay, and you can see we're not rapidly boiling, so it's, they're not exploding, they're not kind of going all over the place. We just have a light simmer. Now once these come up to the surface, leave them cook for another two minutes, and then you pull them out and blot them on a piece of paper towel to let some of that excess moisture dry off. Now we'll be back to finish our couch and lamb with sage ricotta gnocchi as well as wilted spinach. But first, right after the break, we have a special guest. You'll want to stick around for that. Fresh from the boat, straight to the cart. We're out on location on another beautiful day, checking out some more food carts. I'm here with Patrick from FAS Food Cart. Patrick, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, how you doing? Cool. What are you uh, gonna whip up for us today? Well, today I think we're gonna prepare for you Victoria's only tuna fish and chips. Very cool, and using sustainable, awesome, locally caught albacore tuna? Yeah, caught from our own fishing fleet. Um, actually, these just came in this morning. Very cool. So these are probably swimming earlier this week for sure. Nice, should we hop on the cart and uh, see how it all happens? I think we should. Cool, let's go. All right, Patrick, so from 
from the boat to the cart. That's right. And this, how do you get started? Well, what we're going to do is first we're just going to drop some yam fries. Okay. I like yam. the yam fries. Nice color, you know, nice vibrant color makes everything look, look a little better. For sure. And nice sweetness on them. Yeah, People exactly. are going crazy for yam fries these days. That's great. They are. Um, and your order's in as we're working, hey? As it is. <laughs> um, so we take a nice healthy four ounce portion, sashimi grade albacortina. Wow, that looks great. A house made batter mix. Now, is there a secret to your batter? I see well, you got some peppercorns in there. There is some peppercorns and a few other things. Nothing I'm going to tell you. Oh, yeah, of course. The, the old food cart secrets, yeah. That's right. Well, Patrick and I actually go way back. Patrick uh, and I worked together at a restaurant a long time ago, and now I get to be your sous chef. That for once you are. Yeah, perfect, eh? That is. So then, another nice big piece of sashimi yeah, grade tuna. That's gorgeous. Really healthy portions. That's fantastic. Exactly. I mean, we're sort of given a you know, a bit of an advantage in this sort of industry because, I mean, we're one of the only companies that I've ever heard of that, you know, you can sort of go from the boat to the processor, you know, to the store out here and then to the public. Like, I can't think of anybody yeah, else who does that. Yeah, yeah, no, certainly uh, Finest at Sea is known for, uh, for being, you know, a great uh, mentor in the fishing world around cool. here, so yeah. Well, I mean, like, we have, like, really good fishing ethics, like, everything is sustainably caught. Um, we know where all of our fish comes from. We're Canada's only 100% known product origin company. That's fantastic. For, right? for seafood. Great. Um, everything's 100% sustainable. Um, and, you know, we employ, you know, a large number of local people here. Like, all of our fishing fleet are all from Victoria. Yeah. Like, we know... This community gives us so much, we do whatever we can just yeah, to get a little bit. That's fantastic. And that translates right to the plate. Like your customers exactly. can tell that that's fresh food and, and good stuff coming from the sea. It is. Really good. I got cotton, cotton chips. It's very good. But yeah. Are you going to take a bite of it for us? No. We want one of those embarrassing <laughs> fall over your face shots. You can. No, 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 no that's okay. <laughs> Looks great. Sizzling away. Yeah. That batter getting nice and crispy. Very nice. And I imagine you do all sorts of other things beyond just uh, fish and chips, hey? Like yes. Well, we do have a full menu. Um, when, when I started in here, it was just fish and chips and salmon burgers. And since I started, we've added the tuna fish and chips, a tuna taco, as well as lingcod fritters. A, oh, nice. A slow poached lingcod fritter. Sounds uh, like you had a great teacher once upon a time. Once upon a time. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Tune my own horn enough here, hey? That you are. Oh, so you got some that. chowder over here in a pod. This looks great too. That we do. It's sort of um, look at that. You know, a New England style chowder, but with a little West Coast flair, some fresh herbs. Sounds great. So, how would you serve this up? How would this uh, get presented to the customer? A real simple, just a simple food tray, a little piece of paper. Put that in there just so the wind in here doesn't blow it away. Yeah, right. And that's uh, an aioli of some kind. That is a Thai red curry mayo. Oh, great idea! So a nice twist on the unusual tartar sauce. Hey? Exactly. You know, I mean, nice. anywhere, everywhere in town's got fish and chips, right? Yeah. Everyone serves tartar sauce. Why not do something Gotta a little do different? Something right? to set it apart for sure. That we do. So. So more secrets here, or are you uh, going to hit that with just a little bit of salt? Uh, no, we have a special seasoning mix that we have. Of you course, of course. Give her a little smell. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. Looks like you got a little bit of heat in there, too. A little tiny bit. Very nice. A little toss. A few tosses. Nice healthy portions, too, yeah, right? Yeah, look at that. that there. This, this is how you get people coming back, by uh, not skimping out on the portions, right? Exactly. Perfect. And would a normal order come with two pieces of fish, or? Um, you can get one or two. One or two, okay. And that there. Looks that great. There. Grab a fork. Well, Patrick, if you don't mind, done. I'm not a shy guy, as you know. So you mind if I dig right in here Helps and have off. a try? I gotta try some of this, too. So you said a red curry aioli, eh? Yeah. That sounds fantastic. I'm just gonna break a piece off. Look at that. Nope. Try again. Look at that. Tuna, I love the flakiness of the tuna. It looks great. It's so moist. You can see how moist it is. Try this out here. Oh, wow. Mm. So nice. That batter is really light and crisp. Yep. It's gorgeous, Patrick. Yeah. Very nice. Hey, thanks very much, buddy, for having me on your car. Thanks for coming and surprising me today. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Anytime. We're going to head back into the kitchen and finish up our recipe. Up next on Cooking on the Coast. Awesome, Patrick. Mm. Enjoy. Mm. We're back to finish up our couch and lamb dish. We've prepared sage and ricotta gnocchi, so now we're going to get on to the wilted spinach. 
I've just julienned up a little bit of shallot here into a pan. A little bit of vegetable oil. In this case, I like to use a vegetable oil because I don't want any extra flavor from, say, an olive oil or a flavored oil like that. You can see our gnocchi has come up to the top, and now it's ready to come out of the water. Perfect little pillows. They're amazing. So all kinds of nationalities have their own version of gnocchi, but they've all come from one ancient recipe just like this. Okay, we can turn that off now. Start to sweat down our onions and our garlic, and in the meantime, let's start scoring our lamb. Scoring is just going to help us render out some of that fat and makes it nice and crispy. So just run it along, and then same thing, go on the other way. We don't want to go too deep, we don't want to cut into the meat, we just want the fat fat. And we'll get our other pan nice and hot here. Crank that guy right up, perfect. So when you're wilting spinach, it's simply just to add some heat and start to break it down, but it should still have some nice texture. Now we're not quite done yet with this lamb. We still want to add some seasoning. And then something to give it a bit of extra flavor. Not that lamb needs it, but in this case, we're going to use some black mustard seed. Black mustard seed will add a bit of heat, give it almost a sort of horse horseradishy flavor. Crush it with my big fancy knife here. Go. That just starts to break up some of the flavors. It's okay if we still got some whole ones in there. Which we do, which is great. No worries. And once our pan's nice and hot, we'll fire it in that guy. Touch of oil just to get it started. Now all that fat's gonna render out so we don't have to worry about too much oil. Okay, now that we've got our mustard seeds all crusted nicely onto this lamb, we'll get it into our nice hot paderno pan over here. There we go. Leave lots of space. You want a nice big pan just like that one so that you can lay it out nice and flat. Okay, our onions, as you can see, are starting to pick up a bit of color. And now simply just add your spinach. And you'll notice we're just gonna add sort of a little bit at a time here and let the pan, the heat from that pan do the work. As the steam comes up, it's gonna start to wilt all that spinach. Add some salt, a little pepper, as you do. Makes everything taste better. And now a little more spinach. So spinach is mostly water. It'll just break down and it'll end up being sort of a, a nice way to hold those uh, lovely gnocchis in place. Have a look at our lamb here. Flip it over and see how our fat's doing. Look at that. Starting to get some golden brown. You can really see how the diamond shapes have opened up and all that fat's starting to cook right out of there. Coming along perfectly. Don't hurry this process. You, you want that fat to render out our spinach, wilting nicely. At this point, I'm gonna turn the heat off, completely off, and just let it finish on its own there. The residual heat from this really heavy bottom pan, Canadian made, how can you ask for anything better, will continue to cook it until it's just perfect. Yeah, another quick look at our lamb. Nice, you can see through the diamonds where all that fat's starting to come out. Okay, we've just been gently turning this around. It's probably been cooking for about, I don't know, 12 minutes or so now. Making sure to keep an eye on it as it cooks away in the pan here. We wanna cook all sides nice and evenly with a focus on the fat side so we render out that fat. Remember those lamb racks we put in earlier? The bones, they're in the oven still. Let's go have a look. Perfect. We took, the, we took the cover off a little while ago to allow some of the dry heat to really get on those, on those bones and give it some really nice depth and color. And you can see we have a sauce built right there in that pan. That's how easy it is. Well, let's put our plate together here. We've got some spinach. See, it's still lovely. Got nice, nice, integ nice integrity to it still. We'll set this down one side of the pan. And now our gnocchi. Let's grab our slotted spoon here again. Put these guys right on. And we'll build a plate for two here. How does that sound? And once our lamb has had a nice chance to rest, we'll take it out and slice it up onto our cutting board. A nice sharp knife. Looks great. Such a golden crust. All right, there's some lovely pieces. Crispy and juicy. Two of the better things in the world. Now here's a question for you. How many sheep does it take to knit a sweater? None, silly. Sheep can't knit. Come on. <laughs> I love that joke. There we go. Let's move our 
What are our racks? Look at these things. You can kind of tell when they're done because the, the bones have started to poke out the end. We didn't do anything to these and they're starting to French themselves there, so that's perfect. We'll just set them on our plate like this. And there's a second one. And now, our sauce. Tilt your pan up. And look, you can see all that gorgeous gravy down at the bottom. Okay, using a spoon, scoop it up, and go right on top of these guys. There we are. Oh, let's get a little bit more there. It smells incredible. Lamb's one of those flavors that's very distinctive and really has the neighbors wondering what's going on in your house because it smells so good. There we go. Couch and Valley lamb done two ways. Braised ribs and a seared loin with sage and ricotta gnocchi. Now I can't think of a better way to try this lamb dish than with a beverage pairing. I'm here today with Dean McLeod from Lighthouse Brewing. Thanks Dean, for having me back. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, I brought the lamb. What have you got for us? Well, we've brought Race Rock Sale along today. Um, it's our 15th anniversary at Lighthouse, and um, Race Rocks was the first ale we brewed all these yeah, years ago. Yeah, one of the originals. Hey, it I remember is, drinking absolutely. that when I was just a wee lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, should we, should we yeah, dig in, see how it goes? That lamb dish looks fabulous. That smells great, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. So can you tell me what's unique about, uh, about Race Rocks? Well, Race Rocks actually has its own proprietary yeast strain, so even if you wanted to brew Race Rocks yourself, you couldn't. Wow, how cool so, is that? Yeah, it is. And look at that color. So incredible. So Race Rocks has some really nice caramel malt flavors. It's a little bit sweeter and a bit fruity, and it should work really nicely with the lamb. Nice, perfect, because lamb's got that sweetness as well, yeah, hey? Well, should we, uh, yeah, really without yeah. further ado, Cheers. give it a try? Here's to 15 years of brewing. Good. Oh, I took a good gulp there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, let's dig right in. I might go straight for the uh, for the rib here. Yeah, good give idea. That a try. So tender. Look at that. The bone just comes right out. Awesome. Mm. That's now, great, Garrett. That's I have really no good. doubt you're a bit of a connoisseur, so how does that lamb stack Absolutely. up? Absolutely. Um, being an Australian who grew up in New Zealand, I've eaten a lot of lamb. That's no delicious. That local lamb is fabulous. Great. Thanks very much, Dean. Great. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor.